A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Oh, so there we go. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gents. If you can't tell, we are still in the wonderful Pembrokeshire in South Wales. We're out for the sunset once again. I'm absolutely buzzing. And this evening, I've got some company. And with the wonderful Ian Worth, we've met up before, man, like a few times before, handful of times, and it's always a brilliant crack. Do you know what's class? If you watch me regularly, you'll notice I'm always out on my own, man, uh, which, like I say, for the most part, I love that. I love being out with the camera on my own. But it's so nice to have company because you just bounce off each other, chatting about all things photography and YouTube. It's brilliant. Um, Ian's got his own YouTube channel. I'll make sure it's in the video description below. Definitely go and check him out. Um, now, in today's video, I want to talk all about my wide angle lens. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, in um, a video that I did last week, I got these images here. Now, as is often the case, I haven't seen these images yet, so I don't know if they're any good. But the point that I'm trying to make is that they were taken with my wide angle lens and I just don't use it that much. I've always got it with me because I feel like there's um, often situations where I want my wide angle lens. I could never leave it at home basically. But I want to make a bit of a concerted effort this evening to try and use my 14 to 30 millimeter and take some wide angle shots. It's going to be a good spot for it. You know, we've got some dramatic, um, you know, sea stacks, cliffs, it's a landscape really, in my opinion, that is suited for wide angle photographs. But I'm making no promises to use <laughs> and I'm certainly making no promises to myself. I've still got my 24 to 200 lens in the bag and I will use it if the situation comes up. But yeah, we'll give it a go with the wide angle. Um, so yeah, me and Ian are just gonna, I don't know really, just explore up and down this section of coastline Ian's been here before, so he knows a few good spots. <sighs> Fingers crossed we can get some images. Fingers crossed we can use the wide angle. So Ian and I have just got up to this wonderful little viewpoint here. It's really nice. Um, I was kind of looking back towards the way that we've just come from, which is looking amazing. I'll tell you what the annoying thing is, I just said this to Ian. <laughs> it looks really like telephoto-esque. It looks like I'd wanna get my long lens out, zoom right into those beautiful layers down there. I probably will get that shot in all honesty, but I wanna challenge myself to use my wide angle. And I was just saying that to Ian then, it's like, it's quite cool when you come out with that idea in your mind of like, right, I wanna try and make a concerted effort, exactly like I said, to use my wide angle lens this evening. And then it kind of changes the way you're looking at the landscape. It changes the way you think. It changes the, the whole approach to your composition and that sort of thing in, in such a good way, you know? So now instead of wanting to just zoom in over there into all of those layers, I'm thinking about, I'll turn the camera around and show you. I'm thinking about, can I get some of these rocks down here in the foreground? Um, can I include maybe some of this gorse, this beautiful yellow gorse down in the foreground? Um, and yeah, it's really, really cool for that because it gets the creative juices flowing. So fingers crossed after all of that, I can find something worth getting the camera out for or the wide angle lens out for more specifically. Right, so I'm set up here now. Uh, I'm actually really happy with this shot. Um, Ian made a video, weirdly, uh, quite recently about um, bad habits that we all have when we use wide ang angle lenses, you know, things to avoid when you're using them. And I was just saying to him then, one thing that I'm doing, weirdly, is one of the things that he brought up in that video. And I've always had this habit, I reckon a lot of you are gonna relate with this. I've always had this habit of shooting at the widest possible focal length on my 14 to 30. I always shoot at 14 millimeters, man. I don't really know why. So here, weirdly enough, I've actually only zoomed in slightly. I was just saying this to Ian and I've only zoomed in about 15 to about 15 or 16 millimeters, but it's just helping me 
crop this image ever so slightly on the left and the right hand sides and it's helping massively so cheers to Ian. <laughs> um, the light is still quite harsh it isn't great but I'm quite surprised with how it's looking on the back of the camera at least it's always a bit of a myth isn't it what you see on the back of the camera um, but I've just got um, these I've, I've I'll move back a little bit I've tried to be really deliberate about which rocks that I'm using because you can see down here look there's loads of them and I've just found this one particular rock here that's just got this nice sort of diagonal shape that you can see there and I really like again this is proper subtle man but look at this we've got shadow here and then pretty much the whole of the rest of the rock on the right hand side at least is just bathed in light and even though the light isn't that great like I said it's still quite harsh I think it looks pretty cool. Um, the polarizer is helping massively here, um, more than I thought it would, to be honest. So I'll pop it up on the screen for you to see there. That's the Nikon Z7 view. I am going to crop the image in a little bit from the top and the bottom, if that makes sense. Bring it into a bit more of a five by four crop because I just think it suits. And yeah, a nice simple one, probably a bit of a less is more sort of photograph. Rocks crashing waves on the right hand side of the photograph. I don't think the plain blue sky really, you know, takes away from the image. I was a bit worried about that at first. And critically, I think it's a decent use of the wide angle lens. I'm really happy. chat with Ian, see what he's photographing. What are you, what are you photographing mate? I'll put you on the spot look. Uh, nothing. How's it going? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> no, I was just uh, taking a look to see if I could get something with the beach and these bluebells, but yeah. I don't think it's going to work in the current lighting situations and the wind as well. Yeah, yeah. We were saying before actually, it's, um, it's really windy as well if you can't tell. Constantly trying to block the wind <laughs> uh, with my body from my microphone, but yeah, it is windy. It makes it a bit tougher, doesn't it? And, yeah, the light's quite harsh. This is a really nice view, by the way. I wasn't expecting this at all. I think we're going to head down to that beach. Um, probably for sunset, actually. I think that'll be a really nice spot. But you can see, hopefully, the colour of the water is just gorgeous. And, of course, at this time of the evening, the light is only getting better and better. So, yeah, fingers crossed we can find some more shots. Right, so me and Ian, uh, we've just split up for a little bit, actually. We've got a couple of different ideas, and I suppose the thing is, when you're out with another photographer, you don't necessarily want to be shoulder to shoulder the whole time because you just end up taking the same photographs, you know, or similar photographs. So my idea is these, I'll just focus on them in the background, these wildflowers along the ridge of these cliffs. Um, I want to focus on them a little bit. I think they're going to be good to, to do with the wide angle lens. Um, before we move on, I wanted to say another big thank you to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've never heard of them, Squarespace are an all-in-one platform that you can use to build your very own website. And the biggest selling point is it is so, so easy to do it. They've got a drag and drop system and they've got loads of templates to get yourself started. They all look fantastic. They look professional. And again, it is a piece of cake. You needn't be intimidated about the prospect of building your own website. So you start off with one of these templates, add a few photographs, add a few bits and bobs of text. And then before you know it, pretty much straight away, within a couple of hours, you'll have a website. It's quality. And the website, by the way, will look good on a laptop, a tablet, a phone, across all devices without you having to do anything, just naturally. It's brilliant. Um, Squarespace is also a great place to sell things. They've got loads of e-commerce packages as well, um, which is what I do. I always say it. I wouldn't be able to run my business without my Squarespace website. I sell prints, eBooks, calendars, my one-to-one -one workshops. 
and um, it's absolutely brilliant and really seamless as well. And they've also got fantastic customer service, award-winning customer service, if you ever need a little bit of help from them. Um, if you'd like to give them a go, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner and be sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. That'll all be in the video description below. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have a little peruse around some of these wildflowers now. Hopefully, we can get the wide angle right down close to some of them and get some nice shots. Right, so this has been, this has been pretty tough. Um, a couple of things that I've found difficult is firstly, um, I mean, we're on the edge of cliffs. We're on the edge of cliffs, so it's a bit dodgy and I do value the old life, you know? So I, I don't wanna be anywhere that's a little bit too, um, a little bit too precarious, let's say. But I found a photograph. It's not at all how I thought I was gonna shoot this scene. Basically the main scene is the beach, the beautiful vista that we've got over these cliffs. But I just wanted a little bit of foreground interest um, to seal the photograph, to finish things off, you know, especially with using the wide angle lens. I've actually found a couple of these old fence posts with some sort of like ivy or something growing on them. We have got a few wildflowers down in the foreground as well. And I think that's just helping me to tell the story of this cliff edge. That's been what I've been going for really, you know. Um, I have found as well as a little bit of a little bit of an inadvertent tip, I suppose. When I'm shooting with the wide angle lens, I find it so helpful to um, use the LCD screen or the viewfinder and actually walk around and sort of compose, try and compose shots. Basically see how things look through the eye of basically 14 millimeters, you know, or a really ultra wide angle, because I find it really hard to pre-visualize a wide angle photograph. Whereas if I'm shooting at like, you know, 50 millimeters or something, it's a lot more of a natural perspective as per the human eye, whereas 14 millimeter, man, we're pretty much fisheye at that stage. Uh, but anyway, it's worked out here. Now, what's really odd about this is I'm actually shooting it as a, like a square crop, man. So I'll, I'll just pop it up on the screen so you can see it there. But yeah, I'll show you how I'm composing it. It's like a square crop, which I didn't expect at all. I went from like 16 by nine down to five by four, and then eventually to a square crop. I think the main reason I'm doing it is just because I've got everything that I want in my photograph. And even at five by four, there was just too much sky in the frame. It was unnecessary. And it just works in a square for me. It looks good. So I'm shooting this at um, actually F16. I'm not bothering with any focus stacking or anything like that. One tenth of a second and ISO 64. One tenth, you know, I'm shooting at one, uh, shooting at F16. So one tenth is quite a slow shutter speed. There's a bit of a breeze. So I'm trying to wait for a little bit of a lull, a little moment of calm in the wind because I don't want any of these flowers down here to be blurry or anything like that. Now, actually, now's a good time. Hopefully I'm in focus. Just focused on this first fence post here. I actually really like that. I like the way it looks. So not what I was expecting. Pretty good. I hope you like it. I need to get back down to Ian because we were probably meant to meet about 10 minutes ago. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> So I'm, uh, I'm legging it, I'm legging it back down now. Um, I got a little bit carried away with my wildflowers. And uh, like as I said, I think me and Ian were supposed to meet back down at a certain spot. About 15 minutes ago or something, man. So I'm getting a bit of a wobble on. And then if I can get the tripod up and over, we are heading down to that beach, uh, which is going to be awesome. And, and hopefully, I guess, just kind of knock about that area for the sunset. Um, so a lot of potential. I'm really hoping to get something along those lines, which is the one that I got last night. Again, I haven't actually seen that image yet, but judging by how it looked on the back of my camera last night or last week for you, um, I think it was pretty good. So I'm going for something like that, but with the wide angle lens, I'm really enjoying it, man. I'm enjoying the challenge. I'm enjoying using it. 
I, I'm enjoying forcing myself to use it a lot more than I thought I would. I thought this was going to be a struggle <laughs> because I love my telephoto. But right, back down to Ian. Chat to you in a sec. Right, so I'm cheating a little bit. I'm going against the whole concept of today's video. I did say at the start, if anything takes my fancy on the telephoto end, I'm not gonna ignore it. And I found precisely that. So we've got, this is pretty much where me and Ian started this evening's adventure. We're looking back um, literally towards where we met, where we parked the cars, and we've just got this wonderful little vista uh, of some of the hills off in the distance. There's layers of cliffs. The waves are crashing up against the side of them. And even though it's still quite early on, you know, we're still a while to the sunset, the light is actually quite nice. It's just, it's just a little bit golden. Um, so I'm zoomed in about 130, 140 millimeters, something like that. And just trying to get in tight on this section here. Um, it's one of them sort of photographs, like a lot of the time with composition in landscape photography, I find, where it's a case of trying to have less in the photograph, you know, um, really trying to hone in on the most exciting part of the landscape. And it's all about those layers. There's actually a little bit of haze going on this, season, this, this evening, and I really think it's helping with the light. It's a little bit more subdued and this is looking fantastic. I tell you what, this is right down my street. Um, I've stuck the six stop neutral density filter on the front as well. And what are we getting? I think it was about, yeah, three seconds, three or four seconds. I'm trying a few different lengths, um, but it's just smoothing um, the sea actually as it's hitting those cliffs at the bottom. Um, now, Ian has actually taken pretty much exactly the same composition. If I'm being honest, I think I've copied him a little bit, but uh, what I'll do is I'll put his version up on the screen as well after you've seen mine. And we were just joking, I think they're gonna be really, really similar. I think they're even shot at the same aspect ratio, but um, have a little look at it. And um, yeah, not with the wide angle, but pretty good nonetheless. So like I said, I wanted to show you Ian's version of this photograph as well. Absolutely wonderful. And I thought it was pretty interesting because it was only a couple of minutes ago that I mentioned we were deliberately splitting up really. So, you know, we didn't run the risk of taking the same photographs all day. But I think this is a great example of the other side of the coin, if you will, where every photographer is different. Everybody looks at the same scene through their own creative eye. And yep, all right, of course, the compositions are really similar, but to start with, of course, Ian's is a black and white. The aspect ratio is different. He's used a quicker shutter speed, a different focal length as well by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, all really interesting. Please do go and check out Ian's channel as well and his particular video from this day to see how he went about photographing this scene. So I've got a feeling this is gonna be quite a long video, but I'm just gonna crack on, man, because I, or we, me and Ian, we're just having so much fun. The light is glorious. It is literally getting better and better by the minute. We just said it, it's golden. Um, Ian's away, see these cliffs behind? Um, he's away trying to get some abstract photographs of them. They look really, really cool. So I'll be inter interested to see what he gets. Now, I've got a couple of abstract ideas of my own looking out to sea. Um, but I think it's going to be with the telephoto lens again. So I'm letting you down. I'm cheating once again, but I have got some ideas with the wide angle as that sun starts dipping down even more. I tell you what, this is unreal. This is absolutely glorious, man. Look how, look at the long shadows, man. Look at that. Living the dream, living the dream. Oh, so I've finally been able to get the photographs that I wanted. It has been a little bit of a nightmare, pure trial and error for about half an hour. And what I've been trying to achieve is just capturing some of the waves just as they flick over something really abstract. It's the sort of thing that I've wanted to do for a while. 
Um, it's just so nice because that golden sunlight that you could see streaming in from this direction is just shimmering through the tops of the waves. Um, it's been a little bit of a nightmare to be honest because, well, just because of the trial and error, mostly with the shutter speed, I quickly found that around about one third to one half of a second was working perfectly for the effect that I wanted. And then it was just a case of timing. It's been a bit tough, because you may remember in last week's video, I lost my friggin' remote shutter. So I've had to, I've been trying to time it with the two second delay, just as the wave starts coming over, but I've done it. Um, I'm zoomed in as far as I can go and just trying to find some of the tips of the waves. And, uh, oh man, I finally got the photograph that I was after. It's not gonna be for everybody. It's a little bit abstract, but I definitely really like it. So as you can see here, don't want to be looking at my head when, when we've got that going on in the background. How lovely is that? Um, so the sun's just dipping down now. I am going to head over in that direction, just down here a little bit, and try and photograph with the wide angle lens some of these little rocks in the foreground and hopefully get a nice sunset as well. But this is the dream. This is the dream. <laughs> So, I'm pretty knackered. I've been rushing around a little bit and then I just stopped like that. And what I've done, we're using the wide angle by the way, you'll be glad to hear if you've clicked on this video wanting to know about wide angle photography and <laughs> all of that. But I've come away from the waves, from the sea, and it's just instantly calmed me down. Um, I feel like I got that photograph yesterday evening and as much as I, I, I like it or I think that I liked it, like I said, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I feel like I just want to try something different here. You know, I don't want to just sort of replicate that sort of shot. So, um, what I'm doing is I'll put the Nikon Z7 view up on your screen here so you can sort of see what I'm seeing through the camera and what I'm going for. Um, it's, the sun is almost going down, but because of where we are here, it's like, uh, it feels like it's almost in the blue hour. And if everything's, all the colors and everything, the light, it's all just nice and calm and subdued and I really like it. What first caught my eye was this lovely little channel here down in the foreground. And then I love, if you look, everything's just like diagonals that sort of go into the center. We've got a lovely peachy glow on the horizon. All right, we haven't got any clouds, same as uh, last week's video, as yesterday evening, but I really do like the way that that looks. And I'm gonna reiterate, calm and subdued, like really quiet colors and I like it, I really, really like it. There's a bit of a, uh, there is a bit of side light going on, but it's very, um, yeah, quiet and calm, you know, it's not that raging sunset light that we had earlier. The one that I'm usually mad to capture, you know. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in to this week's video. I really appreciate your support. I hope you like this last image. Please go and give Ian um, a follow, you know, watch his video at, at the very least from this evening's adventure. See what sort of photographs he got from this same location. Um, and yeah, please give the video a thumbs up if you have a quick second and subscribe if you're new. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next adventure. Out. So it's not normally the thing that I do to my photographs, but I decided to actually clone out all of my footprints on the right hand side of this image just to give it a much cleaner look. And I'm glad that I did because I do think it looks way better.